Hello, hello, my gorgeous friends on the internet. Today, I want to show you a really cool pattern that you can use to reduce the time complexity of your algorithms from O of N squared all the way down to O of N, and it's called two pointers. And you can use this on a bunch of data structures like strings, arrays, and like linked lists. So I'll try it my best to explain it as easily as I can, and then you'll be able to solve a bunch of lead code problems like a master. Uh, so there's one thing, one thing I only ask from you guys is to smash that like button. It's just down there, the little thumb, you'll see it. You cannot miss it. I know you haven't smashed today. The least you can do is smash that thumb. All right, let's get going. Let's do this. So in a nutshell, all a pointer is, is is just a variable that keeps track of an element, whether that's an index in an array. So for example, this 10, right? We keep track of that, or it could be a character in a string like the letter C. So you just essentially set a variable equal to that position. So in this case, it would be variable equal to string position zero, right? The index zero. Now, if you have two pointers, that's a bit better because it allows you to solve a bunch of different problems. So you just have two, right? So this is a palindrome here. And if you don't know what a palindrome is, like a man, a plan, a canal, P Panama, right? You essentially, if you read the backwards, you get the same thing. A man, a plan, a canal, Panama, right? So what we can do is to set two pointers, right? We can track the index zero here, and then we can also track the last position. So you can do that with like getting the length of the string minus one, right? And that gets you the index of the last. Okay, well, that's the interesting thing with pa uh, palindromes, right? If we see here, well, look, A equals A there, M equals M there, A equals A here, right? If we just kind of keep bringing them together, this is what you'd call a converging palindrome. Just to correct this dumbass, I said converging palindromes, that makes no sense. It's converging pointers. Essentially, the algorithm allows you to move these pointers closer and closer together to solve the problem. All right, or diverging is when you go away from each other, converging is when you come back. So, there's other types out there as well, and you can use these to solve different types of problems. You can have like a sliding window one uh, that just kind of moves like this, right? That tracks certain certain elements in a position. And that's great if you're like checking maybe a subgroup of characters in the string, for example. Maybe you put a pointer here and you put a pointer here, right? And then you can update these depending on the problem. But let's say I move it here, and let's say we want to check if there's like unique characters in here. Well, then we can check, okay, well, we can count all of them in here, but we have like four different A's, five different A's. So we can just return false for that example. But in this example for the palindrome, all we do is we check the last and the first character. If those return true, we are one step closer to verifying if this is a palindrome. So if that's true, then we just essentially increment the first one, right? So we bring it closer. We'd ignore the space here. Let's not worry about that. You could use like a continue or something. And then here you can do a minus one, right? And then we do the check again. So we check M with M. Okay, that's true. Great. Let's move it again. Minus one here, plus one here. And there we go. We check again and then check again. And you just keep doing this until eventually both values can fully converge. And then we can just return true. Uh, if it would fail somewhere here, then we just return false and we know it would not be a palindrome. We had something similar, kind of introduced this concept uh, with the sliding windows as well in the previous episode where we had essentially a problem where you'd want to look for the best price to buy a stock and when would it be the best time to sell, okay? So again, for that, we have two uh, pointers as well. So I'll do a green one for like the best time to buy and a red one for the best time to sell. Okay. So this is how you'd essentially do it. So we'd start off from the first position, right? Let's say that's like the initial time you buy three here. Okay. So you buy it at three. And then we use the second pointer here to essentially go through each day, right? We want to check, well, how has the stock changed in price? Well, day two here, it increased by one. And on day three here, it went down to one, okay? So we'd go through each of these and we'd have like two test cases. So we check this one first 
and we check, okay, well, if the three is smaller than four, that means that we have a profit. So you could just run and calculate this. You can do four minus three, right? And you'd get a profit of one. So let's just note that down. You have like a very, you can have like a variable here. We set that to one. Cool. Now we check the next day. Well, on next day, three is bigger here than one, which means that it's cheaper to buy. So what we could do essentially is take the first pointer and set it equal to our second pointer. And that would look something like this. Poof, this is our new buy price, right? We're trying to calculate when's the best time to buy and when's the best time to sell. Okay, and then we just keep incrementing this red one again. So we go up again. Okay, we got eight, it's bigger. So we can do eight minus one, that's equal to seven, right? So we update this to seven, right? That's our new max profit. Okay, we go again, right here. We do again, this would turn into nine. This would turn into 24. But again, here, we check the value again. And here, one is bigger than 0 0.5. So that means, again, we probably hit a case in our code where we just need to set our first pointer equal to our second pointer. So that would be our new max, like, lowest buying price. And then we get to the end, and that would be the best price because we could do 30 minus 0 0.5, which we would get 29. Point five. Okay, so that's kind of the idea here. Uh, let's look at a couple more different examples so you can just kind of get really comfortable with this. But before I do that, I also want to thank today's sponsor, Brilliant. If you want to sharpen your problem solving skills, Brilliant is the perfect way to do it. Instead of long, boring lectures, the lessons are interactive, hands on, which makes them way more effective. Just like us tackling this two pointer problem in this episode, the real skill isn't really about memorizing the solution. It's building the intuition and being able to spot patterns and break problems down. And that's exactly how Brilliant approaches all of this. You'll find everything from programming with Python to how AI works. Plus, they also have a brand new course on programming with functions. It's the kind of content that actually keeps you engaged and motivated to keep going every day. And the best part is these are not random challenges. They are all crafted by experts from places like Stanford, Microsoft, and Google. So you know you're getting top-notch material. So if you want to level up your critical thinking and problem-solving skills, check out Brilliant using the link in the description down below. Or optionally, you can also scan the QR code here on the screen and you will get a full 30 days for free and also 20% off your annual subscription. Thank you so much, Brilliant, for sponsoring this episode. Let's see how would all of this look in code. So let me just zoom in the font size here a bit. I'll touch a index.ts really quickly here. Let's clear this and let's do mvim index.ts. Okay, so there we are. We are in the file. Let's create a function that's called valid palindrome. Here we go. And for now, let's just pass in a S, which is gonna be a string there. And then finally, um, we should probably pull up the example that they have on lead code, uh, just so we have a test case. There we go, valid palindrome. Let's open this up. And here we go, this would be a little string here that we can pass down. So let's go down here and we can do a, a const t equals to valid palindrome. And let's simply pass down that string like that so we can try it. Okay, cool. So let's also give it a shot, see if we can run it. Let's run node index ts. And there we go, we got nothing. I should have probably added a little console log here. Uh, we test this. How cool is that, that we can run a node with index ts, with TypeScript files, super cool. Okay, so. Like I said, we have two pointers, right? So you can call this whatever you want. Usually you'll see left and right. So let's do left. Again, that tracks the first position, which is zero. And let's right, which is gonna track the last position. So we can do essentially the, the length of the string and we can do minus one. Uh, there we go. Okay, cool. So we got that. And then we just simply do a while loop here, right? We wanna check if the left is smaller then right. There we go. Let's open that up. And that means that we're just going to bring them closer and closer together. And how can we do that? Well, we can do it with left 
uh, plus plus, and the right should go the other way, right? Minus minus. Now again, all we need to do is check if the first and last character are equal to each other, right? So simply we can do if the s left does not equal to s right, then we can simply return false. Otherwise we increment and at the end here we can return true and that's pretty much it. That's how you solve this problem. Now this might not actually pass here because we have a couple of different problems. We have the empty spaces um, which is not great, right? That's probably gonna cause a problem for us but let's try it. Let's simply add it here. Let me make this a bit bigger. There we go. I'll switch over to TypeScript here. Let's paste the sucker in and run it. So as you can see, these two pass, but this did not pass because we need to essentially lowercase those numbers and also verify the spaces. So how you can solve this is simply check if the values are alphanumerical or not. So I created this little function here called is alphanumerical, which just gets the character in here. And then we just check the character code. So you have zero to nine, and then uh, A starts at like 97 to like 122 for Z. And then you just simply return this. So, right, so while you're also checking left and right, you're also checking to see if it's an alphanumerical number or not. And then after that, you do the plus and you do the minus. And finally here, you also lowercase both letters. And that way uh, you can solve this problem. So if we try this method, Instead, this should also solve the Panama problem. And there we go, that passed all the cases now. Awesome. Okay, let's have a look at another example. Okay, let's do a medium one as well that shows off the sliding window problem. Let's do the third one here. Uh, the longest substring of uh, without repeating characters. So given you have a string, find the length of the longest substring without duplicate characters. Okay, so we have S here, which is our string A, B, C, A, B, C, B, B. So the output should be three, right? Because A, B, C, and then it starts repeating here. And when we hit the index, was the index three? Okay, so if we copy over this and try to visualize it, now how would this also look without a, uh, you know, without using pointers? You'd have to do some sort of double loop. So imagine these as not as pointers, but as loops. So you do a loop, which starts here, uh, which might be I, and then you might have another loop, which is J, right? So you check that value, because if you have one loop, you can essentially just traverse this string one, so A, B, C, A, B, C, B, B. If you have two loops, then it's gonna traverse like this, right? A, and then the inner loop would go through all of these values, and then we increment this by one. And then we go again, boom, 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 boom. We go again, and then we start again. Boom, 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 right? But that's O of N squared because we're essentially doing it to the power of two for every character, we check the whole thing again. With pointers, the way we can do this is using sliding windows. So you have A and you have B here, and then you can again imagine like you have a little box over this and then you can keep expanding this box uh, by just moving one pointer over like that. And then you can verify this, you can move this over and then expand the box and then you can verify this. In this case fails, so it returns false. So it's O of N, because you're just going through it once. Okay, so let's look at how we can solve this one. So again, we'll create our left and right. So left, we'll set that to zero. We'll set our right to zero as well. And essentially this returns the max amount, right? So in this case, A, B, C, and then A repeats. So the max would be three. Uh, so I'll just initialize it as zero. Now we need to keep track of this somehow, so I'll just save it in a set. So let's do a set here, create a new set, and I'll use the right pointer to essentially expand that window. So I can say while right is smaller than s.length, let's open this up, um, and then let's do this. I'll check if we don't have in the set, so if I don't have the string with the right pointer, let's just add it. 
and increment it. So we can do set dot add, and then we can do s write plus plus. All right, so that adds it and increments it. Else here, let's delete it. We can say set delete, and I'll actually use the left pointer here and I'll also increment that. Now this is really interesting. How is this gonna work? If I go here and just simply do a console log, I wanna show you how this looks like. Let's console log out the set. Let's run node. So again, we're adding it, right? And, and incrementing it. So A and then B and then C, and then we hit another A. So it exists there already. So we're deleting it, right? So we're left with B, C. And then we're adding one more, and then again, we're removing, adding, removing, adding, removing. And the idea here is that we essentially just want to keep track and get like, when was the time that we had the most amount of characters in here? And it was when we hit the set number three, right? So cool. So there we go. We use that. So all we, all we need to do here is when we add it, what we can do is just update our max. So we can say max equal, and you can use this math.max to essentially return you the highest value between two numbers. So I'll pass down the max that we had from like the previous while loop, and then I can simply check the size of the map, right? So set dot size you can use this little method that you can and that solves your problem right if this is so when we run it first the max will be one here and then two and then three and that will be the biggest number so next time it checks the size is will compare three with two so we'll still return three so max will always be three and that's it and then you simply return the set at the end so that's one way you can solve it uh, there's probably a bunch of different ways that you can do this oops sorry we don't need to return that we need to return max instead uh, but that's a really little cool neat method that you can use so let's try that let's paste it in and see if that works And look at that, it worked, it passed all the tests. Let's hit submit. So that's just a couple of different ways that you can use pointers. Again, there's like, maybe it's a bit less like popular that you're gonna see out there where you're gonna see diverging uh, pointers. It's usually sliding window ones or uh, converging ones that are quite popular. Okay, so hope that's clear. Hope you learned a thing or two and yeah, I'll catch you in the next episode. We'll keep going through this. We'll get into graphs and all that crazy stuff. Calm down. We'll get there. Don't worry. I'm not quitting the series. We'll cover everything. All right. Take care.